Greg Doyle here from the Indy Star and the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Greg? That is so nice of you, Rich. Thank you very much. I'm going to make a fool of myself at times, but it's always going to be a fool coming from the heart as opposed to Josh McDaniels, who, who like like many invertebrates, operates in a cold-blooded way, and I'm not sure he even has a heart. Well, because, yes. because, real quick, Go. I don't care. I, I love my crease. I love my crease. Um, but I do not care what sources or McDaniels or anybody says about his kids and school and all that. Uh, does it, how about the kids of the coaches that he hired for the Colts? And those guys are here right now in Indianapolis to work for Josh McDaniels, only he's not coming. How about their kids? Is it true that he didn't t- tell them he's not coming? What are you hearing on that? Diana Rossini who, of ESPN, sorry, you know, a competitor, but mm-hmm. she's really sure. good. She tweeted that she talked to people involved, you know, those, those people, and they hadn't heard from Josh yet. And this is like three hours after the news broke. So I believe that. And, and first of all, or finally, you, you have to look at, well, who is Josh McDaniels? Is he the kind of guy that would do something as despicable as that? Uh, I submit what happened yesterday and I rest my case. Or I submit what happened in Denver and rest my case. He's a little nitwit. So, Greg, um, what? why did the Colts go in his direction in the first place? Because they screwed up. And I, you know, and not to be that guy, but I, I wrote that three weeks ago. So it's, it's easy to come on here today and say, oh, they screwed up. They shouldn't have. I, I, I was on that three weeks ago and, you know, blind squirrel found a nut, whatever. But I hated it three weeks ago. I think Chris Ballard's great. I really do. I'm not a butt kisser at all because the the most important thing he's ever done is hire Josh McDaniels. And the moment he did it, I pull, pulled out my unit and peed on it. So I, I'm not going to like always say Chris Ballard is perfect. But I think he's very, very good. And he just screwed up with Josh McDaniels. And I really can't explain how he could do something that dumb because I really believe in him. But that was dumb. Well, so let's take this one step at a time. Greg Doyle of the Indianapolis Star here on the Rich Eisen Show. It's the first step to go back to my unit because I kind of like that part. (laughs) No, I think we were just going to leave that wherever that is. Um, (laughs) Okay, I can tell you where it is, but let's move on. So uh, in terms of of Ursay, he had to sign off on all of this, right? I mean, so and the question is, is why go into the Belichick family tree knowing all the history between the Colts and the Belichick family tree? Listen, you're you're preaching to the choir when you ask that question, and I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, nothing about the hire three weeks ago made sense. Um, and and for three weeks, I have honestly felt like the one guy trying to tell everybody the world really is round. People, you you, you can keep on sailing in the ocean. You're not going to fall off the edge of the earth. People have been telling me the the world is flat, and Josh McDaniels is a great hire, and that's what the Colts obviously thought. I don't know. I don't know how they could possibly have done that. It makes no sense to me three weeks ago. It makes no sense to me today. And if anybody ever hires him again, besides the Patriots, and I'm sure they will, I'm sure that's part of the promise, is that you will replace Belichick. If anybody ever hires him again, I'm laughing at them in, in, in advance. But also what I'm going to love is that he's going to take over the Patriots. Obviously Belichick's going to be gone. And Brady will be gone because Belichick's not leaving with, with milk in that udder. He's not leaving Brady. He's going to stay with Brady. So good luck, McDaniel's. I wish you and your two and fourteen career uh, well. So, um, what can you tell me about Andrew Luck's shoulder from what you're hearing there, Greg? Terrifying, terrifying. Um, you're not going to hear this from a lot, a lot of folks because folks hear what they want to hear. And, and Chris Ballard. He's so good when he talks. You know, some people, when they talk, it's just, well, Ben McAdoo has no presence at all. I mean, none. (laughs) Some guys have so much presence that you're just blown away and you believe everything they say. Uh, Matt Ballard can can be that guy, and he tried to say today that Andrew Luck is fine. Um, But if you take away the bells and whistles of his delivery and listen to the facts, the facts are these. Andrew Luck was shut down four months ago. Four months ago, shut down from throwing footballs. He was throwing footballs again. Shut down. And in four months, including time spent in the Netherlands doing whatever he was doing over there, four months later, he still hasn't picked the football up again. In four months. That's terrifying. So. <laughs> Beyond that, though, I mean, to answer your question, do I have any idea? Yeah. Like, am I, am I saying he's never going to play again? No, I have no idea. But neither do the Colts. I mean, if you can't pick up a football four months after being shut down the first time, I mean, four months, Rich. I'm not saying four weeks. Four months. Four months after surgery, Drew Brees was picking up a football. Andrew Luck can't pick up a football four months after being shut down, which was nine months after surgery. This is scary stuff. Mm. Greg Doyle, the Indianapolis star here on the Rich Eisen Show. So do you trust Ballard to do the right thing 
from uh, here I, on out? Because that was it, that was a nice red meat performance today. I thought he did a very good job. He even dropped the uh, rivalry is back on as he walked away from the podium. If I'm a, I'm a if I'm a Colts fan, I and I I really enjoyed seeing his uh, classy uh, but still very pissed off demeanor today, Greg. He's great. I'm telling you. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. You have too, I know. There's there's a handful of guys that, that you walk away from press conference going, that guy is so incredibly good, I can't believe it. Um, Cal Perry's on that list. Mike Krzyzewski's on that list. I'm putting Chris Ballard on that list. I mean, he's just so good. Uh, it doesn't mean he's always right. I mean, people can be great with their delivery and just be wrong. Um, and I'm not – I don't even remember – oh, do I still trust – I do trust Ballard, but I will say it's been shaken. I mean, it's been shaken in a yes-no world. Are the Colts in good hands with Ballard, yes or no? Yes, they are. Am I as convinced of this as I was five weeks ago? No, I'm not. Ask Greg the poll question, even though I probably know what the answer is, but it'll be interesting (laughs) anyway. Go for it, Chris Brockman. Yeah, Greg, would you rather be the Patriots offensive coordinator and maybe the head coach in waiting or the Colts head coach with a very questionable Andrew Luck at quarterback? Well, to be – listen, you're asking me this question, right? Yes, sir. To be the Patriots offensive coordinator means I'm living with those people up there. So no, I'd rather be I'd rather be the Colts. I'd rather be the let's see, the tape on the, in the locker room that players step on with their cleats. I'd rather be that tape than live in New England with some of the people that I hear from on a daily basis. <laughs> oh man, hey, I, I also want to hit this too because I found it interesting and also respectable and commendable from uh, Ballard that he mentioned the names of Jeffrey Monroe and Edwin Jackson before he mentioned Josh McDaniels today, and that's the Uber driver of uh, Edwin Jackson, and they both perished in a car accident um, with a suspected drunken driver. Greg, can you tell people who might not know who Edwin Jackson was, who he was, and what he yeah. means? I mean, he was inside linebacker for the Colts, but I know what you mean. He he was a great guy. He was a, a sweetheart. I mean, he was – and there aren't many sweethearts in NFL locker rooms. There just aren't. And this is how sweet that kid was. He – I mean, first of all, he wasn't recruited in high school, walked on to Georgia Southern, wasn't, wasn't drafted, walked on to the NFL. Then he goes to his first-ever job interview, goes to trial for the Cardinals – and I'm not sure why, but he missed his flight. So he took a second flight, got out of Phoenix, and was so mortified by missing his flight and being late and so terrified that he's blown his chance and such a sweet kid that he thought it would help if he brought his mom's homemade pound cake and gave it to the coaches. Mm. So his nickname is Pound Cake. That's who he was, and that's who he was in the locker room here with the Colts, always smiling, just the – I mean, we always say this about guys that die too soon, but you couldn't couldn't say it about anybody mean it more than you would about Edwin Jackson. And so I did love – that Ballard, yes, said his name, but also said Monroe's name, the Uber driver, because unlike a lot of folks in this country, and by that I mean politicians who are name-dropping Edwin Jackson, as if they would pee on an NFL player if they were on fire, and they wouldn't. But now Edwin Jackson is a hero to Donald Trump because he's a brick in the wall. He wants to build Mexico to keep those illegal aliens out because the, the driver who was drunk was allegedly an illegal alien. So whatever. I, I thought Ballard, thank you for mentioning Monroe because to me that's very important because his life matters as much as Edwin Jackson, and Jackson was a sweetheart. And Ursay's paying for both funerals, correct? From what yeah, that's hearing. what Ursay does. Ursay, Ursay one time used his private – look, he's got flaws. I get it. And if, if you want me to write a long-term paper on all of Jim Ursay's flaws, it'd be a long one. He's got them. But he's also the kind of guy that when a, a, a guy, a, a stranger, lost his dog and his dog was found like a thousand miles away, Ursay sent his private jet and took the dog to him. He just has a huge heart. Greg, thanks for the call, man. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll chat again real soon. And uh, that, that was some uh, high-quality sports writing. On this is a hot right? take, I know, but I stand by it. Well, thank you, you know, no, I, I, look, I, I mean, I, I read it, and you know, obviously, you used words that usually aren't seen in a in a in a sports column, um, but I, it felt like you you meant it. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm, I know the word hot take, and I said it, it gets a bad rap. Sometimes your anger is legit and sincere and deserved. And I think in this case it was. But your tweet last night, when you you that meant a lot to me, and what you said to me a few minutes ago meant a lot. Thank you. You got it, Greg. Thanks for the call. That's, yeah, bye. Uh, it's Greg Doyle of the Indianapolis Star. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.